The Roman Catholic Church is the largest Christian church counting about 1.3 billion baptized people and is one of the world's oldest and largest international constitutions. It had and still has a prominent role in human history and the development of western civilization and it's probably one of the most prominent inspirations for any fictional church and religion. No matter where you look you can find cardinals, archbishops, grand cathedrals cathedrals and the pope-like figure who runs the whole organization. And more often than not, these organizations tend to be secretly evil. Hey, I'm the world building sage. I will ask you a set of questions that will help you during your creation process to bring your thinking muscles into motion so you can continue on fleshing out these details that evolve out of the questions asked. But first I'll give you a short introduction. A quick feel on what churches, cults and religions are. Religio cultus est. Religion is cult, or rather cult activity. To pull up a more modern definition on religion, defined by the anthropologist Clifford Eertz, a religion is a system of symbols which acts to establish powerful, pervasive and long-lasting moods and motivations in men by formulating conceptions of a general order of existence and clothing these conceptions with such an aura of factuality that the moods and motivations seem uniquely realistic. Of course, the main difference for a fantasy setting and sometimes sci-fi settings is that the conceptions the religions worship tend to be real, unless the religions are veiling the truth to any degree, of course. But to explain the important part of the definition, a religion is a set of beliefs, mythologies, rituals, morals, and how Geertz puts it, symbols, which define and manipulate the human thought and belief to such a level that the matter of worship of those beliefs are real in the eyes of the people. And here comes fantasy into play. You remind yourself what the consequences of fantastical beings, gods, magic and magical creatures or whatever else being real are. One of my pet peeves in religious world building in fantasy. Religion plays seldomly a real part in the people's lives and is just something you practice for a certain time per day before disconnecting yourself from the divine again. The concept exposure to the fantastical should have a more pervading impact of belief on the people. People in the past wouldn't even understand the difference between religion and the daily life. Why should it be any different in a fantasy world? Religion as a concept is very modern, but I'll talk more about this in a video dedicated towards the more mythological parts of religion. Today we are talking solely about the social organizations that constitute religions and a bit about practices. These organizations that dictate membership and set of beliefs that organize the clergy or just the living traditions that set the religions into practice. At the beginning of the video I talked about the Catholic Church, which of course is the most well known of these organizations. While the Catholic Church dictates religions, canon, ethics, beliefs and practices, other organizations may be way looser in their impact on the religious thought. A druid circle for example may simply be a small number of druids who practice rituals for gods and nature together while only vaguely having the same set of beliefs and morals as each of them hailed from a different village who each worship other local gods. But before we ask ourselves the questions, I'll have to tell you that there are two different angles on them depending on how fleshed out your gods and your mythology already is. I usually create the organization and set of beliefs and practices first before creating the gods and mythologies in detail of which I have a vague idea until then. It's totally fine to do it the other way around though. Creating gods and mythology first will make the first question easier at least. What are the levels of interaction between your religion's gods or other figures of worship or veneration and your religious followers? Do your religion's gods exist at all? Is your religion about divine worship at all or about something else? The religion could be about finding the transcendence in yourself or it could be that the divine your religion worship exists but is indifferent to your followers. Think about the consequences this might have for the popularity of your religion too. And lastly, think about the way the divine interacts with your religion's followership. This differs widely even within the same religion, see Catholicism and Protestantism. 
Apropos religious interaction. Who are your religion's religious figures of importance? Is there a professional clergy who carries the faith? Or is the faith carried through its believers alone? Or maybe it's a set of lay clergies who aren't professional and only lead rituals for a certain amount of time, maybe as part of a political office for example, like in ancient Greece and Rome. Even a religion without a clergy might still have non-clerical organizations like religious orders and monasteries for example. But the uh, most obvious sub-question to think about is how both clergy and non-clerical organizations and your religion as a whole is organized. Think about the hierarchy and the ways the religious interact with each other, from the most mundane of believers to the uh, highest of bishops. All of these questions I'm asking today deserve their own videos, but the following set deserve them the most. So don't forget to subscribe and stay tuned for my future videos. So think about what your religious practices are, what are the religion's doctrines and what are the places of worship. I connected these two questions because their answers tend to be connected in a way. Depending on the religion, you can go on and write lists forever, but it's better to just think about a few, a small handful. Your religion might be most well known for. These examples are the communion of Christianity or the Hajj for Islam. Some other ideas might of course be feasts and festivals. Everyone likes feasts and festivals. In the end, everything can be a religious practice or a place of worship. But again, let's keep this for the respective videos before I start ranting about fantasy religions again. Lastly, think about the way your religion gains new followers and converts, how they are distinguished from other religions, how strict the religious doctrines are, and what happens to those who deviate from the right path, if there is any at all. Of course, think how your religion reacts to a magical world, how inclusive it is to other religions, and if your religion is syncretic, meaning generally including different forms of beliefs or practices into the religion, considering the circumstances the religion finds itself in, or if it's strict to its own belief. So if you don't want to hear constant nobody expects the Spanish Inquisition jokes, better make your religions open and synchronous so there is nobody you have to create to combat heresy or whatever. Before, I said that I usually build religious organizations and belief systems before I build gods and myths, but to put the organizations and practices into context, I'll broadly tell you what our religion is about first. Our religion doesn't have a real name. They call it cult practice, veneration, or worship. Outsiders refer it as Trigoan Druidism, Tregos being simply the continent it's mostly practiced on. Heavily influenced by Celtic religion, our faith doesn't have a large set of super-regional gods, cults, and deities the people worship. There are merely the Arcface, Titania and Skia, the Sky God Toves, Cornuts, the trend like incarnation of the mother tree with big antlers on its head, and the mother tree itself, representing nature as a whole. All the other gods are venerated locally only, but even the gods are vastly outnumbered by the amount of spirits, monsters, fey, and other magical beings and creatures people venerate. The many myths and legends people tell each other, which resemble real world fairy tales a lot, are one of the few other super regional ways that connect believers of Trigo and Druidism. While merely the magical creature's names differ from tale to tale, those tales are actual instructions on how to act when encountering certain set of creatures, and of course are about morality and ethics. In our world, the gods, divinities and magical beings exist. They exist and interact with the world, they attack or defend people, they are predators or protectors or just beings that go day by day. And there's truly a plentitude of them, ranging the entirety of European folk tales and their creatures, which is why elves don't exist in a classical fantasy sense in my setting. The religion is a lot about the daily interaction with those magical beings and their shenanigans. It's about protecting yourself and your belongings, your village and community from those beings. Entire villages and communities form pacts 
with relatively powerful beings which protect them from other beings while blessing crops and letting them prosper. Higher deities are worshipped for their respective domains. There might be a powerful dwarf who resides in a mountain range the people of that range worship as a god of crafting and ingenuity. The uppermost gods are usually worshipped for their entire concept. The Arc Fae Titania is the king, gender neutral, of all Fae, and since the Fae are usually the most prevalent protectors, Titania is worshipped for being their ruler. Skia, on the other hand, is the leader of the Wild Hunt and represents protection from evil as a whole, and is in some parts venerated as a god of death because they are married to another religion's god of the dead. More often than not, worship in this religion is more disaster prevention than anything else. Despite every individual worship on their own and within the community as a whole, there are still a set of clergy. A set clergy are the druids, which again are split into different kind of druids. First, there are the druids you think about when hearing the term. They either live as hermits or form groups called circles. Druids are mediators between the magic and the mundane. They help mediating pacts between communities and magical creatures. They lead important magical rituals and communicate with nature itself, setting boundaries boundaries between the realm of nature and civilization, for example. And then there are ritualists, who are also called druids. They are found in every village. They lead the town's rituals, but are less powerful and have less magical knowledge than other druids. But they are otherwise just normal citizens, besides their duties anyway. Then there are clerics, who are focused on certain local or super-local deities. They are usually residing in important places of worship, lead rituals and speak in the name of the deity if it can't speak on its own. While druids are mediators, rangers are protectors of the wild. They keep the wild clean of dark influences and are solely focused on the protection of nature. There is a saying that a poucher doesn't fear angered spirits, but they fear the ranger. Lastly, there are wizards. They are what rangers are but for civilization. They protect civilization from dark and powerful creatures and ward off curses and spells and gather knowledge to better protect civilization. But they use more sophisticated and less occult types of magic. The thing is that all wizards are generally nobles and all nobles are to some extent wizards or at least spellcasters. The noble class shares their duty with the wizards which is why they have the same term if I would invent an Trigon language. There are still minor differentiations, however. Some wizards, mostly non-inheriting sons and daughters of nobles, become wizards in the actual sense and form circles and towers and what you have in mind when thinking of a wizard. Knights and paladins, by the way, are just wizards in armor. I'll keep myself short on religious practices and places of worship since I'm already taking way too much time and I'm making a video for both on their own in the future. Uh, there are animal sacrifices. There are festivals and feasts. There are burnings and group rituals. Think about weird local practices in the real world, add some magic to it or not, and you'll have what happens here. Places of worship widely differ as well. But the biggest rituals are usually made within circles of men here with magically carved runes. There are also many places of pilgrimage, depending on your profession. Craftsmen bachelors usually travel to the most important place of worship of your profession's local deity, which might be uh, quite a journey for young people. The religion doesn't really gain new followers. There are no conversions. In the cities nobody cares if you don't participate in local festivals and rituals, since there are more than enough people. But in the villages one person missing who doesn't participate may anger the village's protector, which usually means that they are shunned as well. But in the end nobody really cares which God you worship, even if they are worshipping an entirely different deity who is not even from the continent at all. Being highly synchronous, they even tend to look for similarities in their deities. An influential person might just add their god to the roster of gods a town worships without much of an issue even. Especially trade hubs tend to have many many patron gods and beings which tend to actually be from all over the world. That's it for today's video, world builders. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And tell me in the comments what your religious organizations are like. See ya!